Throughout the 19th century, the rapid increase of population and cities served as both a uniting and dividing factor in American social, economic, and political life. The explosion of cities made Americans far more diverse and more similar at the same time. Urbanization was one of the major factors that changed America forever. Urbanization is a population shift from rural to urban areas, and the ways in which society adapts to the change. Urbanization began during the Gilded Age, because of the mass immigration from both foreign countries and farms in search of industrial jobs in cities. Urban cities force people from entirely different backgrounds to live and work together, creating a uniting factor. Immigrants from all over Europe, including Germany, Ireland, Britain, and Scandinavia, created diversity in America. These immigrants had common financial struggles, social or religious oppression, famine back at home, and all shared the desire of the American dream. People from all over the world heard about the wonderful American lifestyle. It was attractive because it held freedom and social equality. Unfortunately, these expectations rarely became a reality for immigrants. Most immigrants faced similar political, social, and economic problems like the ones they had back at home. However, they brought with them their diverse political beliefs, social customs, and religious traditions. The blending of diverse cultures was a dividing factor during this time period. Minority groups claimed certain areas of the city and gave it nicknames like Chinatown, located in San Francisco, and Little Italy in New York. These mass amounts of immigration led to bigger cities and more urbanization. The Industrial Revolution of the 19th and 20th centuries transformed urban life. The Industrial Revolution of the 19th and 20th centuries transformed urban life. It also gave people high expectations for improving their living standards. The increased number of jobs, along with technological innovations in transportation and housing construction, encouraged migrations to cities. Merchants, lawyers, and manufacturers built townhouses. Hello, my name is Justin, and I'm from 60 Minutes. And today's segment is called A Day in Chicago. And I'm here with special guest, Mr. Baker, who is an ex-slave. Hi, my name is Mr. Baker, and I've been a free man for about 15 years. When I was freed from the South, I moved to the North, to a city like Chicago, a big city. I moved there because a friend of mine told me that big cities didn't require much specialized labor, and it was very easy to get jobs there. Tell us about your job. Many African Americans, like myself, had to get jobs such as being cooks and janitors. There was lots of opportunities for us, and it's very easy to find work. There is a lot more opportunity here for us. Now tell us about the people you meet in your everyday life. There's people from all around the world. Like, for example, there are people who work in my factory who are from Canada, Spain, India, and from the Middle East. Thank you so much for joining today's segment. Markets, shops, taverns, and concert halls provided services and entertainment. Cities were very populated and people began to live walking distances between words and shops. The development of railroads, streetcars, and trolleys in the 19th century enabled city boundaries to expand. People no longer had to live within walking distance of their jobs. Railroads also allowed goods to be brought into downtown commercial districts. Technology was very beneficial. Office buildings, retail shops, and light manufacturing characterized the central business districts. Women were also drawn to big cities because they had new opportunities to work in factories. Before urbanization, women would do domestic housework, but they now had many more opportunities, such as going to school and attending universities. The creation of great urban parks were designed to allow city residents a healthy, restorative escape from the strains of urban life. Museums also started gaining popularity in the 19th century. The creation of art museums, concert halls, libraries, and parks required philanthropy by the wealthy. An architect by the name of Daniel Burnham proposed to bring order and symmetry to the distorted life of cities around the country. He led the City Beautiful movement, which led to the growth of the suburbs. In 1870, a New York state law required a window built in every bedroom. Urbanization also brought along the first building to have an elevator, known as the Equitable Building in New York, and rose seven stories high. Louis Sullivan was the leading figure in the early development of the skyscraper. 
Due to the demand of jobs in factories, cities became overpopulated. Urban areas doubled, tripled, or quadrupled in size. From 1870 to 1920, the urban population went from 10 million to 54 million. Overcrowded cities caused major health problems as well. Living conditions were dirty and unhealthy. Cities were unsanitary and filled with diseases. There were no sanitation codes and many citizens got severely sick. Trash was thrown directly onto the streets and factories constantly outputted pollution. People lived in tenements. Tenements were slum dwellings for industrial workers with little or no plumbing, often windowless with no heat. Factory work was dirty and dangerous as well. Industrial safety was a very large issue. It was difficult if not impossible to hold factory owners responsible for deaths and injuries. Around 1900, 25 to 35,000 deaths and 1 million injuries per year occurred on industrial jobs. Around 1900, 25 to 35,000 deaths and 1 million injuries per year occurred in industrial jobs. Bosses would also not care about the well-being of the workers. Factories were so detrimental to one's health that people usually had a short life expectancy if they worked in a factory, and the government provided almost no regulation for the treatment of business employees. He holds, and it was easier to get certain jobs done. These children were treated poorly as well and didn't receive the proper care. Most children worked at factories instead of going to school. Indoor plumbing was rare, while cholera and typhoid fever were common. Until the early 20th century, safe drinking water was way too difficult to come by. The plumbing and supply issues of water also played a role in fires, along with candles and kerosene heaters. In 1871, the Great Chicago Fire burned for over 24 hours, killing about 300 people and destroying 17,500 buildings. Jacob Rees, a social reformer who documented the conditions of the early 19th and 20th centuries, shocked the middle-class America with pictures and descriptions of tenement life in his book, How the Other Half Lives. Organized groups that controlled activities of political parties in a city were the norm, and were known as political machines. They were involved in fraud and bribery. Political bosses controlled jobs, business, courts, and other city agencies. Both took advantage of immigrants by helping them out in exchange for votes. During this period, graft was also the norm. Welcome back to another episode of 60 Minutes. In today's episode, we will be discussing the phenomenon of skyscrapers. In Chicago, 1884, steel frame construction allowed architects to design taller buildings. And today, this dream is finally becoming a reality. And I am with William LeBron Jenny here to tell us about his new project in designing one of the biggest skyscrapers in Chicago. Hello. So tell us, how did you design this amazing building? I was able to use a steel frame, which allowed the building to be sturdy, and now it's nine stories high. It's nothing compared to the project my friend is working on. Please tell us, what would that be? Well, the Empire State Building is going to be 102 stories high. It's also going to be a third of a mile long. There will be more office space, working space, and efficiency within the big city. Wow, that's incredible. Well, folks, this will conclude tonight's episode of 60 Minutes. Tune in tomorrow for another amazing episode of 60 Minutes. Overall, urbanization really helped shape America in both good and bad ways. Modern entertainment halls, technological advancements, and efficiency within the city were all positive outcomes. However, negative outcomes such as unsanitary conditions, crime, and political corruption arose as well. It still provided new opportunities for all people including African Americans, immigrants, and women. Urbanization paved the way to the progressive age where the government became more involved within American lives.